Manchester United returned from the international break to draw against Brentford away from home and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Manchester mm -hmm. United drew 1-1 at the GTEC Community Stadium and the performance was severely lacking in many categories. Just before we get into the nitty gritty, 10 likes are the aim for this video. Let's smash it out the park, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. And now, we can speak about what the... Question of the day. Now, if you're unfamiliar with question of the day, we feed you, we provide to you guys in the comment section watching a video right now with a question at the very beginning of this video before we even get to the breakdown. By the very end, we will give you the answer, but the aim for you is to get your answers into the comment section or into the live chat if this is a preview before you see the answer. We're trusting you here, so we're going to provide the question of the day right here right now remember get your answers in before the end of the video or before we give you the answer at the end of this video here we are now brentford registered 85 touches in manchester united's area during their 1-1 draw guess the highest ever amount of touches in the opposition box for manchester united in the premier league era Look, we've made you guys wait long enough. We have waited long enough. We're literally filming this right now. 10 minutes to 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh. Clock's moving forward. Oh, my God. <laughs> Happy summertime, I guess, people. The, the, the sun better come out now. You know, I don't want to see no rain, no coldness, none of that. But anyway, look, we don't need to swivel in and out of this game because the evaluation of what we all watched was pretty much self-explanatory to me. The prototypical Manchester United performance where, funny enough, I thought we settled into the game relatively quickly. It didn't amount to anything in that initial period of the first 10 to 15 minutes because we lacked purpose in possession. And, and this is the one thing I have to stress from early, ladies and gentlemen. For too long now, the overall movement and dynamism of this attack has never been addressed. And for the life of me, for the life of me, I don't understand why. I mean, counter-attacking moments can click, sure. But when you need to really carve out chances and drag defences out of position, it all seems way too rigid, resulting in constant breakdowns and exploitations because two out of the three midfielders often push up high. Shout out to CM, he makes a good point. In, in terms of the chance creation, a part of that can be coaching, a part of that can be execution. But yeah. kind of spinning the block and touching on the exploitation part. We've all seen the statistics of Manchester United conceding high shots on goal. During the broadcast today, I think the average was 16.9 per game. Yeah, And the company around that is Luton Town, is West Ham United. No need to say any more. But 85 touches in the opposition area, ladies and gentlemen. Let that sink in the highest of any Premier League team within the last five years. <laughs> within the last five years, yeah. When you think about it, this game very much so could have resembled Eric Ten Hag's second game in charge. Which, funny enough, was here at the GTEC Community Stadium 4-0 against Brentford. And that was after the Brighton game. If you know, you know, you just had to be there. The emotional roller coaster of last season. Hey, you can you can wind back to some of our previous United Twins episodes and see how we felt at the time because the videos are there. The documentation is there, ladies and gentlemen. And also, while I touch on that, make sure you go and check out CM's latest article, article speaking about the Brentford game, touching on it. Have your say in the comment section below, cm22ent.co.uk. Boom. Oh. Ivan Tony hits the post. Jorgensen. Massive presence from centre-back, travels forward for the set-piece. He has a free header at the back post from a pretty simple corner routine. Manchester United caught slipping and, and they were constantly testing us aerially, to which we ended up extremely lucky, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think in the comments about that. Ultimately, Thomas Frank's side probably rude those missed opportunities to punish us because they really should have. 
And we're just talking about the first half. If you believe the second half was going to be any different, then could it not find in an alternate universe where the same game was conducted? There was no reaction. And the best moment we had aside from the goal later on was Rasmus Hoyland's only big chance, which was well saved by Mark Flecken in Brentford's net. Probably one of the two key opportunities we had all game. And maybe that's just me missing out some opportunities here and there. Let me know in the comments, but that's what I read. That's what I'm reading. That's what I'm seeing in the moment. I have to give credit to Andre Onana once again, who handled the ball well on many occasions and was crucial in a performance where his defenders were virtually dominated in terms of aerial duels. 27 to 26 in the end, I think. But it felt like so much more all over the pitch. You know what? Manchester United under the cosh may be one of the best teams in world football. When the clock's yeah, running down, yeah. especially. Substitutions were made to reinvigorate for sure, but it just always works this way. It was great to see Mason Mount come on in what had been a first season, riddled with injuries and score his first United goal. But we learn also as fans of this club not to celebrate too early. Literally, three minutes after. And keep in mind, we're in the 99th minute now. Final minute of added time. Ivan Tony takes down another ball looped towards him, pulls it back to Christopher Ayer who dispatches. Eric Ten Hag was on the sideline celebrating like a madman after we scored. I wouldn't want to see his face see him afterwards. Dex. Vulnerability high equals punishment pending. We didn't deserve three points. I'll be real on that. Brentford outclassed us almost in every category, probably in every category of the game today or yesterday now. Lucky, t <laughs> we were lucky to even get one, let's be real. Welcome to CTC News, where I, Chase the Chaos, will be reporting on the latest, greatest, and not so greatest news revolving around Manchester United. So without a further ado, let's get into today's stories. Manchester United, according to Fabrizio Romano, have been scouting Boca Juniors centre-back Aranaz Almino. He's an 18-year-old Argentine centre-back with high potential, known for his tenacious style of defending. This would match the Jim Ratcliffe's ideology of finding talent to develop rather than diving deep into United's previous styles of high-risk, Low reward investments. Let us know in the comments if you have seen Asamino, play him, what to potentially expect if these rumours come to fruition. Another centre back that has been on Manchester United's radar as of late is Jean Claire Todibo of Nice, who is reportedly being valued at around £40 million. Pounds. It will be interesting to see if Manchester United once again act on their interest in the summer. Nisa also owned by Ineos for those who weren't informed as such. The final story of today comes from the Manchester United women's team who are set to appoint Matt Johnson as their new head of women's football. The current director of operations at the Manchester United Foundation, if appointed, will replace Polly Bancroft in the initial role stated after she departs at the end of this season. She had been at the club since October of 2022. Talks of disorganisation when it came to the handling of affairs like transfers and contract negotiations may have led to her departure. Here's hoping that things will improve tenfold as they look to establish themselves as, well, as legitimate title contenders next season, hopefully, as it is out of reach for the 2023-24 campaign. And also, good luck to the ladies facing Everton at home. Big up to you, 12 o'clock. PM UK time on the day this video will be released. So good luck to Manchester United's women's team versus Everton at 12 p.m. We've come to the end of this episode CTC News segment. As always, let me know what you think of the stories in the comment section below. And me, CM, Cappy, I guess, will be there in the comment section replying to each and every one of you. So. Have a wonderful rest of your Easter weekend if you celebrate it. Until the next time, chase the chaos.
ITC News. Gracias, Mr. Chaos, for reporting the news. CTC News here on the United Twins every single episode, ladies and gentlemen. So go and tell him what you thought of the news stories reported on, ladies and gentlemen. But we have reached that stage of the video where it's time to reveal the answer to our question of the day. Now Brentford registered 85 touches in Manchester United's area during their 1-1 draw. Guess the highest ever amount of touches in the opposition box for Manchester United in the Premier League era. You talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the twin. Now back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Don't question question time. Question time. We aren't gonna waste any time on revealing this question of the day. You saw the replay. Now roll the transition. Let's go. In December of 2016, Manchester United touched the ball 65 times in Middlesbrough's area in a 2-1 victory at home. It took two late goals by Anthony Martial and former Red Bull Pogba to see out the year in style. So ladies and gentlemen, you got that answer correct? Push out your chest. Boast a little bit. Slap a one in the chat. If you got it wrong and there's no way, you don't need to worry if you got it incorrect. Slap a two so we can track the progress over time. Listen, I don't know why I have to keep on transferring from episode to episode. I go from good vibes to bad vibes, bad vibes to good vibes, good vibes to bad vibes. I don't know. If you're not answering it at all, what's the point? We're all here to participate, right? We're all here to have fun. What you're telling me right now is you. Yes, you. You're a serious enemy of progress. Yeah. I, I got that one off my chest, ladies and gentlemen. You sure? Shout out to everybody who participates in question of the day. It's just a little bit of fun. Let us know in the comments how we could possibly improve. Question of the day, maybe in the future you guys can submit some of your own. Wait, does that even make sense? Nah. On to the next. <sighs> End of the episode, a few housekeeping stuff. First and foremost, cm22emt.co.uk. Make sure you go and check out CM's latest article on, of course, this game that we were speaking about today. Brentford versus Manchester United. Leave a comment on the article. Have your say. Share it around to your friends and frenemies. You know what to do. The same thing with this video. But we will get to that. Of course, the next few games. Uh, they're coming quick and fast in quick succession. Chelsea on Thursday. Liverpool. The big game. Liverpool on Sunday. I mean, oh. Chelsea's a big game too. And then Bournemouth will be on the 13th of April. Jeez, we're already in April, ladies and gentlemen. We're already at the end of the season, basically. Where is it gone? <laughs> Where is it gone? And also today, CM also will be doing a basketball watch along a little NBA chillathon on our second channel, CM22. If you go to the channel page, scroll down at the home page of the channel, CM22 ENT, you should see additional more of CM, where it has both of the additional channels linked below. So click CM22 and join us later on for a little NBA fun and NBA chiller fun, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, follow us on social media, CM22ENT on Twitter or X as they call it nowadays and TikTok. That's where you'll be seeing additional short content, pushing all of these videos out and doing what we do best, ladies and gentlemen. So as it goes for this video, if you've reached the very end, if you've enjoyed it, make sure you're hitting that like button. You're subscribing if you're new. You're sharing to your friends and frenemies. And remember, the goal was 10 likes on this video. So make sure we smash it before you leave. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to have a blessed rest of your weekend and a wonderful day ahead. A beautiful start to the new week. We... And <laughs> we'll see you lots in a bit.